chimpanzee begin to tell a tale? Once upon a time? <laughs> no. For me, that implies the story is false. A fairy tale. And the one I have to share with you is true. How do I know? How am I so sure? <sighs> because I was there. Many years ago... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's an excellent way to begin. Many years ago, I had the good fortune to find myself in the company of two extraordinary men. Yes, you heard me correctly. Men. Humans. They were different to those that you know. They were from another world. Well, this world, actually. But from another time. Long, long ago. And maybe you've heard of them. Their names were Alan Verdon and Pete Burke. Since they arrived on our world, in our time, we had been relentlessly pursued by the fearsome guerrilla warrior, General Urko. A sentence of death hung over each of our heads, and so, each day, we were forced to run. But for the moment, we were confident we had reached a place where the guerrillas could not follow. At least not for a while. <coughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Come on, Galen, lighten up. Come on in and get your feet wet. Uncle Pete will hold on. I'll make sure you don't drown in, oh, let me see, all three inches of water here. Oh, how very kind. And then perhaps afterwards, Uncle Galen could carry Pete Burke up to the upper branches of a very tall tree. All right, you two. Uncle Alan says it's time to cook. Fruit and veg for those with fear of water, fish for those without. Who's hungry? So what's the plan for tomorrow? Sunbathing? Papa Partan? Tomorrow, we move on. Alan Verdon was our unofficial leader, a man totally dedicated to seeking a way back to his own time, where he had left behind his much-loved family, a wife, and a son. For the birth, things were different. Unlike Verdon, who haunted the past, he lived only for the present. He accepted his fate and could happily have settled down, but instead he chose to stand by his friend. And what about me? Why did I stay with them? To be honest, at that time, I had no idea. So which way, then? I say follow the stream. Galen, any thoughts? Do you know these parts? Mm, uh, no, not really. Mainly fishing villages, if memory serves. I doubt you'll find anything of interest out here. Okay, let's get some sleep then. We'll work it out in the morning. Set your alarms. I want to make an early start. <sighs> Good idea. We're about to miss all the traffic. Urko? Relax. It's not Urko. Look. Up in the sky. Wow. That's nice, Alan. Nice a patch of nothing I never did see. What was it? Bird? A plane? Superman? Thanks for sharing. Oh, wait a minute. Keep looking. Would someone care to explain what we're supposed to be looking at? There. Was that lightning? It's not lightning. It reminds me of those flashes you sometimes see over railway lines. Railway lines? Form of transport. Squash a load of people like sardines in a can and shake them around. It doesn't sound very pleasant. It wasn't. So what do you think? That's not natural, Pete. That's... That's something else. Uh, that'll be up in a couple hours. Got a fix on its position. How about we find out after breakfast? Those lights might indicate a power source and technology. Working technology. Pete? Alan, maybe we should save the guesswork till morning, huh? Okay, you're right. Back to sleep. Whatever it is, 
It'll still be there tomorrow. Oh, Malin, awake already? Yeah. I want to make an early start. Give Peter a nudge, will you? After a meager breakfast, we packed away our belongings and set off on what was to be one of the greatest adventures that we would ever know. We talked about everything that morning, except the nature of the flashes we'd seen the night before. By some unspoken agreement, it was as though to contemplate their nature would somehow invite disappointment. We may not have discussed them openly, but we each had our own private thoughts on the matter. For Verdon, it had to be the evidence of a still thriving, scientifically advanced community, one that had lost none of its technological know-how. Behind those hills, so tall they were almost mountains, was an isolated human settlement, a paradise that would welcome him and have a starship ready to take him home within days. Burke and I did not share his high expectations. Get down! What is it? See for yourself. Five o'clock. Gorillas! Doubt they've seen us. Probably just a routine sweep. Of course, might not be looking for us at all. Perhaps we should just keep moving. Too risky, Pete. Now that we're perfectly framed against the sky, just one of them looks up. They're splitting up. Three of them are coming this way. Great. That's great. They're covering all the bases. Got no idea where we are. We're way ahead of them. <laughs> Except they have horses. Point taken. Let's keep moving. Keep your heads down. That night, we witnessed another display of the eerie bands of light that floated and danced in the clear night sky. Pete! Check out this compass. The needle's gone crazy. Whatever it is, it's generating a tremendous magnetic field. I imagine a thousand H-bombs will do that for you. Alan? You should start walking away from this thing, not toward it. You can't be serious. You're serious? You just walk away without ever knowing? Come on, Alan. Something that screwy can't be anything good. It just reeks of fallout and all kinds of... If there ever was any dangerous radiation, it would have dissipated long ago. Whatever's over there is just magnetic. Well, but think about it. Walking in an old city or building is one thing. Walking to a radioactive hotspot is something else. But you don't know that it's radioactive. And you don't know that it's not! All I'm saying... Let's be cautious. Fine. All right, then. You stay here and be cautious. I'll go on alone and see what's up there. You really think we should risk our lives over that? Yes. And you want to know why? Because it might be the way home, Pete. It might, just might, be the one thing that helps me find my way back. So yes, I'll risk my life. Even if it bought me just one moment with my family. Chance to just touch them. Just tell them. Just tell them. Alan, wait! Come back! Shall I go after him? No. Better just leave him be. We have to go with him. You know that. Even if you think it's insane. I don't think it's insane, Galen. I want to get home. I truly do. Somehow, I'm going to make sure that he does. I don't know how or when. I'm going to get him home. What if it kills me? After a light breakfast, we packed our bags and began another day's march. Of the three gorillas, there was no sign, but we thought it wise to choose a path that offered more concealment, even though it would slow our progress considerably. The day was hot, dry, and dusty, but mercifully uneventful. That evening, as we made camp once more, we settled back to watch the nightly show of dancing lights. Here we go. They're brighter than ever. Closer than ever. There's a strange smell in the air. Like burnt bread. If you say so, pal. 
All I smell is trouble. First sign of trouble. Real trouble. We're out of here. I promise. Well, you two can scamper away like a pair of cowardly humans any time you wish, but uh, <clears throat> the fearless and legendary explorer, Professor Galen, is ready to face danger wherever it rears its ugly head. <laughs> but as I lay back and close my eyes, I remember thinking that although uh, Professor Galen might well be looking forward to playing on ahead, I, the fugitive Galen, wanted to return the way we'd come and never look back. I woke just before dawn. The bands of mysterious energy no longer whirled and danced above our heads, but as I looked around, my eyes fell upon something else. Another flickering light, not so far away. Alan! Pete! Wake up! Gorillas! Behind us, I, I think they're on our trail. Uh, this is it. The room we came looking for should just be over here. So what are we waiting for? Galen, you okay to climb? Apes are always okay to climb. I'll be at the top a good half an hour before either of you. We reached the summit at dawn. The sun brought with it our first clear view of our surroundings. It was a large natural crater, utterly barren and totally empty. Can't be right. There must be something here. There must be. We have to get down there. There has to be something we can't see. Alan, if those gorillas come looking, we're going to be sitting ducks. Oh, we're... Oh, we're a good four or five hours ahead of them. I'm sure there's time to take a closer look. Then let's go. Okay, let's separate and look around. If anyone finds anything, shout loud and clear. Let's move. Alan! Take a look at this. Doors. What the... I wonder we didn't see them. They've been concealed. Set right back into the very rock. That's deliberate. That's camouflage. Whoever made them designed them so they'd be invisible from above. And they were trying to hide something. Here's a nameplate. Chrono Dine Industries? Ever heard of them? Doubt they were ever around in our time. Alan, put your hand against them. There's a vibration. There's still power here. Maybe there are still people inside. Hey, how about it? Anyone home? Open up! Perhaps they think we're selling something. Okay, let's get them open. Maybe try some elbow grease? Come on. Pull! Okay. I'm open to suggestions. There has to be another way in. Emergency exit, back door, something. We may never find it. The disguise as well. It sits and seals for a hundred years and never find a thing. Did either of you see anything? Anything out of the ordinary? Not a thing. Nope. While we discussed the doors, up in the hills, the gorillas had arrived and were arguing amongst themselves over how to take us into custody. For Vandar and Xerxes, it was an obvious case of shoot first and ask questions later. But Tobias, their leader, had been informed of our importance to Urko and the authorities. We were wanted alive. For now, Tobias decided to just observe while sending for reinforcements. Tobias, they say these hills are haunted by demons! We should flee before they devour us. No, Xerxes. I would rather face the wrath of all the demons in hell than that of Urkos. You and I will hold our position and observe. As long as they can't see us, we are in no hurry. Vandar. Sir. Ride back to the outpost. Get word to General Urko. Tell him the fugitives have been found. Tell him we will remain here until reinforcements arrive. Hurry, Vandar. Stop for nothing. Understood, sir. Okay. Let's take a look around and see if there's anything else. We've already looked, Alan. I'm telling you, if there's nothing... Salem! Oh, the ground. We 
should be to be the way. Are you okay? I am trying. Well, any consolation? We can get another way in. Come on. Get down here and take a look. I think this was some kind of air vent. Safety. Come on down. Come on. Let's go this way. Any particular reason? Yeah. That's the direction of the doors. your average industrial facility. Check the rooms. I want to find out where the power is coming from and what it's for. <coughs> it's all right, Galen. Just stay within shouting distance and you'll be fine. If you find anything interesting, just yell. Well, I'm not sure what we're going to find, but be assured, if it is unpleasant, I can certainly manage it yell. And so we began our search of the Chronodyne facility, and no room appeared different from any other. We found something my friends called elevators, and they told us that there were two floors above our heads and four below our feet. The size of the facility was enormous. To search it all might take weeks. Finally, we stumbled upon an archive, a wealth of printed matter, most of which crumbled to dust at the touch of our fingers. Oh, where? Have you found something? I can't be... This is impossible. What? What's impossible? This place. This whole complex. It was devoted to just one thing. One huge project. No. Insanity. It's nonsense. Utter nonsense. What is nonsense? Time travel. Time travel? <laughs> oh, yes. Very amusing. Yes, yes, I see. Time travel. Very funny. Very funny indeed. It's what this place was built for. It was a research and development project with time travel as the objective. And you could do this? Travel through time? No, not in our time. But the human race was still thriving long after we left. They built this. Did it work? Let's see if we can find out. Can you make it work? I think so. It's pretty straightforward. If we can find a way to tap into the energy source that powers the lights, we should be fine. And then we can travel through time? What? No. This is just a projector, Galen. The best we can hope for is a movie map, eh? A message. Moving pictures. Information. That kind of thing. Just a couple more connections and we're all set. So come on, Alan. Spill. Tell us what you're thinking. Okay, then. I'll tell you what you're thinking. You're thinking we're going to somehow get this machine working and that you're going to use it to hitch a ride back home. Pete, I doubt that our ticket out of here is a 500-year-old machine. Uh-uh. Now you're telling us what I'm thinking. Own up, Alan. It's written all over your face. Okay. Straight up. The thought is there at the back of my mind. Seriously, Pete, I'm not expecting anything from this. For now, I just want to find out all I can about it. Okay, Galen. We're ready. This works. You'll probably see some kind of moving image along with some sound. Don't be alarmed. There's nothing here that can harm us. Go ahead. All so good. The Nativity. Reenacted every year in thousands of schools across the world. But what if you could watch the real thing? The dinosaur. Was it really a meteor that wiped the net? Chronodyne Industries are proud to announce that for the first time in human history, the answers to all these questions and more are now within our grasp. It's a sales pitch. Sales pitch? A promotion designed to raise interest in potential investors. They need money to finance their research. This is a way of exciting people that had the money and getting them to hand it over. How? Well, I'm no scientist. 
So how about I hand you over to someone who is? What is that? I think it's some kind of cartoon. It's not real. It's like a drawing. It doesn't look real. I think it is. I don't care for it. It's disturbing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chronodyne Industries. My name is Professor Kronos. Imagine if we could peel back the barriers of time the way I can peel a banana. We could witness the building of the pyramid. The fall of ancient Rome. The first steps into outer space. Time is just a window, a window that we will soon not only be able to open, but step right through. Twelve years ago, I discovered a secret process that would open the windows of time. The machine I needed didn't exist, and so I founded Chronodyne Industries and built it. My first experiments were moderately successful, but the energies required were enormous, far greater than I ever anticipated. Nevertheless, four years ago, I successfully managed to send an item back through time. But I know I was successful. Shortly after, during the transportation of the ancient Sphinx to New Egypt, a metallic disk was uncovered at the base. Archaeologists claimed it was over 4,000 years old, and yet I had made it only a few weeks previous to its discovery. I had successfully sent it back through time to a predetermined date and location but I knew it would be rediscovered over 4,000 years later. Ladies and gentlemen, Chronotine Industries invites you to prepare yourselves for the adventure of another lifetime. Is that all? I not give much away. That was a promotional film, not an educational one. Just enough to whet your appetite. Well, guess what? It worked. Is there any more? Not here. There must be all kinds of archives spread around the place. So we're staying, then. I'd like to find out more about what happened here. Wouldn't you? Of course I would. Let's forget those gorillas on our trail. I haven't forgotten, Pete. Even if they climb to the top of the crater, I doubt they'll see the doors. But they'll easily see the hole Galen made in the ground. I know. So let's go and cover it up. Hide it. Galen and I will get right on it. You... don't go traveling through time while we're gone. I promise not to. I'll keep looking. Pete, I think we're on to something. Maybe. You think we're wasting time? Actually, my hairy little friend, we're going to learn an awful lot. I don't think there's going to be much consolation now when we realize that you're still stuck here. And there's no possibility that any left here might still be working? Galen, suppose the time device is still there. It'll be ancient, and suppose, by some miracle, it could be made to work. First, you'd have to know how to work it, and suppose you could figure it out. Like the projector, you mean? Nobody risked their lives with the projector. But Pete, it was ancient. You weren't sure how it functioned, but the two of you made it work. But if the structure does house a time machine, it's going to be a whole lot more complex than a projector. Besides, whatever power source it requires will be unimaginable. Greater than anything we've ever known. Far greater than a few old slow powered lamps that can provide. That power source greater than anything we've ever known. It's here. Bottom level. The energy was so colossal they had to contain it beneath the mountain. Whoa, what's here? What are you talking about? The machine. There's a machine for traveling through time, and it's right here beneath our feet. Does it work? I don't know. Let's go find out. Now, wait a minute. Before we all go rushing off, Pete, listen to me. I'm calm. I'm rational. Since we saw those lights in the sky, you've been dragging your heels over this, and so far you've been wrong. Wrong about everything. Alan, I only... I just don't want... It's too late. My hopes are up. My imagination is fired. I don't know what we've got here, and I doubt it will get me home, but I have to investigate it further. I'm not blind to the reality of the situation, Pete, but if there's a chance, the tiniest, flimsiest, most outrageous chance ever, I 
have to at least look into it. But I won't take that chance without you, Pete. I need you with me on this, every step of the way. So will you help me? Please. If it kills me. With Burke at last fully cooperative, our search for answers was vigorously renewed. Rooms were searched systematically, files read and paperwork studied. I watched the humans work and wondered for the first time if our journey together might be drawing to an end. Suppose they were about to find a way home. Would I really want to go with them? To live in a world where I was the only one of my kind? And where my closest relatives were kept in cages and ridiculed? In that moment I knew that even if the time machine were found to be in working order, then I would not be accompanying them on the journey. I've got you. What have you found? This all relates to the power source. Negative multiphase, polyplasmic fusion. Do you know what this is, Alan? Don't need to know. I used to drive a car every day. Never did fully understand how it worked. The equations. The energy. It's huge. Hey, Pete, listen to this. These ability studies regarding biological projections. What on earth is that supposed to mean? Sending living matter through time. An animal or people. Adventure of another lifetime. So they did it. They were certainly taking it seriously. There's no record here of it actually being attempted. Keep looking. There's an open file here that has reference to Project 23. It looks like it might have been the very last thing they were working on before... Before what? They stopped keeping records, I guess. Okay, Pete, you keep looking. I think it's time I took a look down below. Galen, you coming with me? I may as well. I'm not much use around here. What are you planning to do? Do? Do about what? About the machine. If we find it and it's working, what are the two of you going to do? I don't know, Galen. I really don't. Will you use it? Well... Let's just see if we could find it first. Hang on, Galen. These doors. This must be it. Can you open them? Let's see. Come on, Galen. Let's see what there is to see. Watch yourself. Galen. Beyond anything I've ever known. What is it? What have you found? See for yourself. principles of self-consistency. Alan? Galen? Find anything? You guys okay? I'm fine. I guess. How about I see if we can rustle up some food? Pete, do you think you could lend a hand? Uh, sure. Lead the way. Okay. Want to fill me in on what's going on? Oh, Pete, we saw it. It's there. It's the most terrifying and most beautiful thing I've ever seen. You saw it? Oh, yes, it's quite real. And Alan, he believes, Pete. He believes in it totally. He's lost himself to it. He's consumed by it. He thinks this is your way home. Pete, if you can't get it to work, I think it'll crush him. Galen, that's exactly why I didn't want to come here. Everything's working down there. Machines, all sorts of things. It all works. I'm frightened, Pete. What? Machines? Yes. Frightened they won't work? No. 
I'm frightened that they will. What? I can't go with you, Pete. But I don't want to be left here alone. Gail. No, I'm sorry. Pete. Yeah? If you think there's a chance, any chance it might work, then I promise I will do whatever I can to help. I know you. But there's something I have to tell you first. About the machine. All right. Here's the deal. Provided we can understand the computers, then I think it's going to work. But Galen, I wouldn't worry about being left here alone. What do you mean? Well, it seems there's only one ticket. There's only enough remaining power for one person and one more trip. If it works, It'll only work once. If Alan's going home, he's going home alone. Oh, he'd never do that. He'd never leave you here. Which is why we can't tell him. What? What do you mean we can't tell him? Galen, listen to me. I've been through this in my head a thousand times already. If you can think of another way, then please let me in on it. But I can't lie to him, Pete. He's... And we won't lie. Just won't tell the total truth. This could be the only chance he ever gets, Galen. I can't get him home without you. I need your help. But it makes things so difficult. I don't see it as difficult, Galen. We send him home or we don't. If we feel anything for each other, then the choice is... We're still clear. <sighs> Very well, then. Our good friend, Galen. Now, let's go give Alan the news. Well, you might at least look happy about it. Did you hear what I said? I... I... Congratulations. That's if the machines really are working as you claim. And if we can manage to decipher the initiation sequence. When I've read it, well, it's pretty automated. Oh, I feel to go home. <laughs> Make it sinking in. Here, I'll show you how it works. You have these two metal plates suspended by a magnetic field. I think we saw those. Well, that's a start then. Anyway, something called a negative polyplasma charge creates an intense field of energy around the plates which literally rips apart the fabric of time, creating a stable wormhole. The bridge between two time periods that the Traveler, that's you, can simply step through. It's that simple? <laughs> Jeez, Alan, of course not. That's the gist. You'll have to be insulated from the charge if the wormhole is only stable for a fraction of a second. And the energy released in that split second makes the combined power of every nuclear device ever detonated look like a match being struck on the surface of the sun. And this will work. Maybe. Probably. They never actually tried it with a living person because they couldn't figure out a way to bring them back. Understand, Alan. It's strictly a one-way trip. If you overshoot and wind up in the Middle Ages, that's where you'll be staying. It's got to be better than here. Amen to that. And we can only go one at a time. Yes. Are you sure we have enough power? Oh, yeah. Power stored in batteries. It's been building up charge for over 500 years. Those lights in the sky? That's just steam. Vapor. Power cells are so full they have to vent off the pressure now again to stop from blowing. All right, then. So what's next? Next, you take me downstairs and we take a closer look at those machines. See if we can make them dance to our tune. Go through it again. I want to hear it all. As we further discussed the workings of the machine, we were blissfully unaware that outside, Tobias' patience was about to be rewarded. Xerxes, come here. You should see this. Sir. Riders, moving fast and coming our way. They should be here by nightfall. I think that things will soon grow very interesting. Observation portal. So that's what negative charge polyplasmic fusion looks like. See those two plates floating in the air? That's your doorway home. Well then let's see if we can find a key. One of these workstations should be dedicated to navigational input. Geographic locations, specific time zones, latitudes and longitudes all need to be entered. Look for something that looks like it handle all that. Can I help? Yes, you can. 
Before you can travel, you need to be naked and coated in protective gel. Protect you from who knows what. So take a look around, see if you can find bottles or jars or something that looks like jelly. Jelly? Um, frog spawn. Something that looks like frog spawn. Ugh. Hey, you didn't say anything about being covered in frog spawn. We separated, each searching for a piece of the puzzle. Virgin examined displays and visual readouts, looking for anything that related to dates and coordinates. Burke matched workstations to those listed on charts, marking them accordingly, while I checked rooms and lockers, hunting for packets or jars containing something that looked like... frog spawn. Yo, over here! Hmm, could it be? Hang on. Please stay in location. Um, United States of America? Please define specific date. Hey. Please define now more history. Use. Please define specific time period. Require month, day, and year. Power, minutes, and seconds are variable. August 20th, 1982. The day after we hit the magnetic storm, and down banished from all tracking systems. Please enter any other relevant things. Uh, how about we go for an open space? Like a park or something. Abject park. And lock target. <laughs> Stay here and keep watch. General Urko, I am Tobias, sir. Garrison commander of... Where are they? The fugitives? They're underground. They're hiding in some kind of cave. Just over this hill. Take me there. This way, sir. You're quite sure they're still there? Yes, sir. The chimpanzee Galen was seen only this morning forging for food. If he's there, the humans can't be far behind. For your sake... I hope you're right. Silence! These lights in the sky didn't harm you last night, nor will they harm you now. Stand fast or I'll make no such promise. The hole, sir. Over there are some doors, but we've been unable to penetrate them. Go back to the horses and fetch any explosives. Then we'll see what rabbits dare nest in this burrow. I returned from my scavenger hunt carrying a number of items I'd found scattered around in the many storage lockers. I looked for the humans and wandered over to the observation portal that overlooked the chamber below. And there they were. They looked so small and lost, dwarfed by the might of the chamber and the energies it contained. I realized sadly that the sight of the two of them together might soon be a thing of the past. Past. How I suddenly hated that word. Find anything? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, all sorts of things, in, including, I think, your frog spawn. Hmm. Could be. And I found this. Looks like a camera. Some kind of advanced instamatic. Does it work? No way to find out. Galen, move in a little. Alan, put your arm around him. That's it. Perfect Kodak moment. I see a picture forming. Is it witchcraft? No, Galen. Just science. A toy. Nothing more. I like this machine. Maybe it's time to give it a spin. I'd like to run some tests. And how would we know if the tests worked? You're stalling, Pete. And I guess the answer is that we're as ready as we'll ever be. All right, then. Let's get to it. The 
Let's get this show on the road. General Urko. Two kegs of explosive powder. As requested. Good. Now, take five troopers and wait by the hole. After we blow these doors to hell, the rest will follow me. We'll go in and we'll flush the fugitives back to where you'll be waiting for them. No one is to be killed. If there is any killing to be done, I will do it. Do I make myself fair? How's the frog spawn? Full enough? Quite cool to know, thank you. Now, talk me through it one last time. I don't want anything to go wrong. Relax, it's easy. You just stand on the platform and rest the palms of your hands flat against the primary linking element. That's door number one, by the way. I initiate the sequence from up here, and there'll be a slow, gradual buildup of energy. It has to build slow because it's so big. How long? Point. Twenty-five minutes. In all that time, you must maintain contact with the plate. You're literally completing a circuit. If you let go, you can fuse the whole thing and start a chain reaction that can blow the whole deal. All right, then. Guess we're good to go. Me first, then Galen, then you follow. Piece of cake. I guess this is it, then. I guess so. Good luck, Alan. I'll meet you both in Aftek Park. I'll be the next guy hiding behind the bush. Give Chris and Sally a big hug for me. You can hug Chris yourself when you see him. But keep your hands off of Sally. You can be proud, Pete. Count on it. Can you see him? Yes, he's walking up to one of those panels. There, he has placed his palms against it. He's signaling okay. This then. Initiate sequence. You, 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 and you, follow me. Take cover! Everything seems to be going well. What was that? It felt like an explosion. Somewhere above? Pete, only apes have explosives. I think we have company. Stay here. Make sure nothing stops the countdown. I can't let them find their way down here. I'm going on up. Maybe I can stop them. Pete, don't be stupid. You can't stop an armed gorilla. Let's finish this for now and get back while we can. Helen. Alan's going home, and he's going home now. There is no second chance. Have you got that? Just make sure that nothing stops that countdown. Nothing! You hear me? But... but what do I have to do? Nothing. It's fully automated. Just make sure no one comes through this door until he's away. Fan out and find them! A week's leave, a promotion for the one that does. There's one of them. Who's shooting? Said I want them alive! No shooting! Please, Come on, then. One at a time, or all together. Twelve minutes of your chronographic projection. While Berg fought valiantly upstairs, I stared down at Ferdinand and waved reassuringly, hoping the sight would convince the astronaut that nothing was wrong. What the hell was Berg playing at, leaving me here? Did he really think he could stop the gorillas from doing whatever they wanted? Berg could only hope to buy time, but at what cost? And then I remembered. My blood froze as I recalled a vow made on that night we'd first seen the lights in the sky and discussed the chances of Verd never returning home. I'm going to make sure that he does. I don't know how or when. I'm going to get him home. If it kills me. Oh, Pete! Stop! Which one of them is it? Let me see him. Burke! What a wonderful surprise! General, where are the others? Where are Verdon and Galen? Ah, I was hoping you'd tell me. You've enslaved them. Don't worry yourself. I'm sure I can find them for you. He came from down below. 
Then that's where we'll start looking. You and me, Urko. What? Did you say something? I said you and me. Here. Now. Let's see how superior you feel when I kick your hairy tail from here to next Tuesday. You're challenging me? Sure. You're scared. You're stalling. And you're just a dirty coward who's afraid of a human. Very well. We will find your friends shortly. After I have torn you apart with my bare hands. Release him. It will take but a few moments to discover just who is a f- Nine minutes until photographic projection. Are you? Bridge between two time periods as a traveler. That's you. You simply step through it. Seeing you. When you say us. The portion of my relation. Who is saying? I could bear it no longer. I had to help Burke. With a final glance at Verdon down in the chamber below, I bid him goodbye and then abandoned my post. I raced up the stairs, taking them two, three at a time, until I heard the distant sound of a mob cheering. I crept forward more slowly and peeped around a corner. To my horror, there I witnessed a group of guerrillas gathered in a circle, clustered around General Urko and Berg. And by the lawgiver, they were fighting. <sighs> you fight well. For a human, but that's all you are, Burke, an animal. You know any animals that can do this? <sighs> I once held a newborn gorilla that hit harder than that. But not as hard as this! Oh. Ah. Ah. Going somewhere, Ewan? Surely you're not beaten already. Why, I was just getting started with you. Oh, it's what that lady sings. That lady, what are you... Oh! A commendable effort, human. But all you've done is give me your arm to play with. I covered my eyes with horror, my mind numb with terror. Burke was being slaughtered, and I felt utterly useless. Think, Galen, think, I demanded of myself. You must do something. Anything. You want me dead? Afraid of a human? One doesn't fear an animal, Burke. So say it before you die. Tell me you're just an animal. Say it. You're just an animal. Say it now, Burke. You're just an animal. Time to die. What's happening? Make it stop! Teleport. Successful. I lifted my arm from over my eyes and looked around, appalled at the devastation. The whine of a thousand insects seemed to fill my ears. No one was standing. Gorillas lay all around on the ground moaning, trying to rise. Those that made it stumbled around awkwardly, their fingers stretched before them, groping. I watched one blind and dazed gorilla find his feet and collide with the wall. I can't see! I can't see! Kill the humans! Kill them all! A moan caught my attention, and I saw Burke roll over onto his back. Instantly I was moving, sprinting the short distance and falling to my knees next to the battered human. 
I laid a hand under his shoulder and helped him to sit up. Oh, shh. It's me, Dalen. Dalen. Can't see a thing. I'm hardly here. Nor can the gorillas. Come on, I'm getting you out of here. I half led and half dragged the weakened Burke through the doors, away from the carnage and into the fresh air outside. As we struggled through the ruined doors, I looked up into the night sky. The bands of light were gone. Did that mean the machine had worked? Something had happened, but I didn't have time to go down into the sublevels and find out what. Just lean on me. Stop right there! Who? Hands in the air! I see I wasn't the only one spared the effects of the blast. Who are you? Tobias, District Garrison Commander. Now stand away from the animal. Kill them! By the lawgiver, Galen. What did you do? I did nothing. It was you that charged in here with your fists, your guns, and your explosives. This destruction. This isn't the work of apes. It's all because of them. Move aside, Galen, while I put that miserable creature out of its misery. No. Perhaps you do not quite appreciate the deadly nature of this situation. I said move aside. I can't let you kill him, Tobias. You defend them now? So it's true. The ape that runs with humans would wish to become one of them. Step aside, human lover. I'm warning you for the very last time. I cannot... I will not let you kill him. Why? Why do you defend it? It stinks. It lies. Just look at it, Galen. I turned my head and studied Burke. Tobias was quite correct. He did smell bad. He was also bruised, bloody, blind, and half-deaf. He was a fugitive with nothing but a death sentence. A low species, a man now very much alone. Slow, weak, and at this moment quite helpless. Quite pathetic, really. It'd be better off dead. So just tell me this. Why bother? And at last I knew. We were no different. We both smell, we're both bloody, we're both weak. We're both the same. Why do I bother? The answer is obvious. Because he's my friend. Then, by the lawgiver, I have no choice. That excuse was old even my time. Alan? No need to shout, I'm okay. I was well insulated down there. But what happened? Didn't the machine work? I don't know, Galen. I wasn't there to find out. How's Pete? Alan? Erko. He gave him a beating. Yeah, so I see. Come on. Let's get him out of here. Verdon took one arm, and I the other, as together we lifted Burke to his feet, quickly leaving behind the crater and the rock formations that had guarded the Chronodyne complex for so many years. Okay. Take five. Alan, what happened? What are you doing here? I'm here because you need someone to watch your tail. Jeez, Pete, what were you thinking? Oh, for God's sake, he didn't betray you. He didn't abandon your precious military protocol. He was looking after his friend. I'll get to you in a minute. Oh, no, you won't. You'll get to me right now. He lied because we thought it was the only way to get you home. He doesn't want to stay here any more than you do, but the machine could only work once. What? I know you're only a human and therefore painfully slow, so I'll spell it out. He was willing to stay here and very likely die here so that you could have your chance to go back to your family. So, if you'll permit me to be so bold, just back off. What do you mean it would only work once? It won't have worked at all. You were going to stay here? Yes. But you said there was plenty of power. Well, there was. 500 years ago. Lights in the sky. Vapor. Pressure. Leakage. Would you have gone if you had known the truth? Pete. Didn't know. I couldn't have known. Pete. It wouldn't have worked. What? The machine? No. Your stupid plan. Why? 
Because once I'd figured out what you'd done, I would have commandeered the first starship out of NASA and come right back to get you. Ball. Oh, maybe. And I guess we'll never know. But know this, Pete, and listen real good, because I don't want to ever have to say this again. I'm listening. We came here together, and we're going home together. Well, we don't go home at all. Do I make myself clear? Crystal. We're still friends. What do you think? I think I have some major sucking up to do. Big time. We can't stay here too long. We should get moving. Sounds like my song. I'm truly sorry it didn't work. That you never got your chance to reach them. Maybe it did work. And maybe... Maybe I reached them. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Come on. Let's follow my favorite star. The North Star. That's the one that guides lost travelers home. And that, my gracious audience, is the end of my tale. If, of course, you are the type that believes a story can ever end, I have found that more often it simply flows into another. What's that? What did Verdon mean? I am afraid I do not and never will have that answer. But I'll always have my dreams. Following today's news, a NASA official has now ruled out any plans for a rescue mission. Hope for the missing astronauts continues to dwindle. This is Mark Scott reporting live from Cape Canaveral on behalf of WRKM News, Texas SM. This is WRKM Texas. In the kitchen! Was listening to. It's 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, August 20th, 1982, where we continue to bring you any breaking news on the vigil for the missing astronauts. Any news of Dad? Ah, oh, Chris, baby. Oh, nothing. Nothing yet. We have to be brave for just a little longer. I know. He warned me this could happen. The same thing happened to Colonel Taylor. He'll come home, Chris. I promise you. He'll find his way. I know he will. Can I have a soda? Sure, honey. Help yourself. What the hell? What did you do? Nothing, Mom. It wasn't me. I think your fuse is blown or something. God. What's that smell? Burnt toast. I can't see anything. Well, well, what's that? That wasn't there before. It's a photograph. Ow, it's hot. Well, show me. This is strange. I've never seen this picture before. Who's the guy with his arm around Dad? The one dressed as a monkey. And why does Dad look so dirty and tired? Oh, I don't know. It must be a joke. Take it at some long ago Halloween party. Where is he, Mom? I don't know, baby. I really don't. But here, let me show you something. There, you see that star? That's the North Star, your father's favorite star. It's the one that guides lost travelers home, and wherever your father may be, I know he can see it. It'll bring him home, Chris, I promise. It'll bring him home. <laughs> 